Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum. Very good morning. Uh, so, testing mic. Testing mic. One, two, three. Uh, can somebody answer? So that I can, uh, so there's a feedback. I, I can hear you and you can hear me. Answer. Uh, I, I need a mic now. Hello, Doctor, can oh. you hear me? Okay, uh, I'm Yudian. Eh? Yes. Okay, uh, you can hear me, eh? Yes, yes. All right, all right. See you. Okay, salam. Salam. Yeah. All right, um, those who are in, uh, go to you learn and uh, as usual, do the attendance. Okay, for the attendance, click on there. Then we'll click on your own, yeah. Uh, so, uh, present lah, be present. And then, uh, we are now at a lesson 4.2, which is uh, we, are, we are having synchronized backpacks. And later on, we will also go to the class activity. Eh? So, those who are not, I'm not sure if anyone didn't join my class from since week 1 to 3. But anyway, every week we have class activity, which will be done in uh, Padlet. Eh? So, if you didn't join my class in previous week, so you can just go through the uh, lessons. Or uh, go to the recording that I uploaded in the, okay, I have uploaded recording, okay, synchronized class, so recording for week one, two, uh, week three, no recording since we did the asynchronous class. So um, you can go, just go to the recording and then follow the instruction, the, what, what we did uh, during class. And also uh, if there is uh, some uh, pass being done on week one, two, and three, Week one and two, you can upload your answer here. Okay, so this one will be the activity. So uh, there's no reason that a student who didn't join my class in week one and two, uh, and week one and three, uh, did uh, cannot do the pass, eh? Because we have the recording, correct? Right? Um, let's see how many people are in. So make sure. Oh. All right. Lots of students not in yet, eh? So attendance will be open only during class hour, eight to nine, eh? Okay. So make sure those who plan to skip my class, uh, do you get that? Eh? Will actually reflect in your uh, grade uh, later on in the semester, in the term, and also final exam. So, I will actually um, do some analysis on your grades with respect to your attendance. Okay, and also to the activity, the feedback uh, activity or assignment that I asked you to upload. For example, last week with three, we have some tasks which is uh, doing the tutorial, right? So, tutorial one. So I ask you to do some exercises. So uh, I think most of the students actually submitted, but I'm not sure if there are some students didn't submit. Okay. So later on, uh, I think I need to confirm back uh, who actually registered under this section, section one. Eh? Okay. So let me see how many people inside. Twenty six. Eh? Okay. I think uh, we can start right now. So a recap. So let's just directly start. So a recap on week one and the week two. So what you have learned in week one and two is that uh, I did some introduction. So it, 
degradation on the bedrock of some system. So what are the example of a very simple example of some system is in the tsunami wave. Eh? So we have multiple wave coming in and it will actually pop up into one large wave. So that is example of a, a very simple signals which is combined. And then I explain about the continuous time and discrete time signal. Okay, so uh, this one is uh, what are this what are actually definition of the continuous time signal and discrete time signal. Um, and uh, next was on the transformation of the independent variable. Okay, so uh, before I start, I go directly before we have lots of calculation and uh, sketching some uh, graph and so on. So make sure that. You have a usual for this class. You have a piece of paper in front of you. You have your pen in front of you because we are going to do the exercise together. Okay. Uh, and normally in class, we are going to do it together, not you watching me doing it in the front. Okay. So we are going to do it together. Right. So please make sure that uh, my suggestion, if you want to score A for this subject, print out the notes that I upload in learn chapter one print it out and then uh, you can just directly jot down in that notes directly okay so it's easier your notes wouldn't be uh, separated uh, in different folders and so on eh? and uh, in transformation of independent variables so uh, what was the uh, what was what was the topic that you have learned eh? anyone uh, right there in the chat what did you learn in the uh, point number three this one in the chat right there what do you learn i'm sure you can you guys can answer this because you did the tutorial okay i'm waiting or you can just unmute your mic if you want to okay time shifting bgr jane time shifting okay good what else Pathogen. Okay, what else? Who? This other student? Other student? Reverse. Reverse of what? Okay, uh, please. Uh, when you answer, you need to answer in a complete form. Yeah? Okay, it's like an interview. Okay, what? Uh, uh, explain about yourself. Okay, uh, my name is my name is Maria Magazani. Only that, that's not how, uh, not that is not the correct way how to answer any video. Okay, you are not going to actually explain about what is your background, academic, and so on, right? So, um, be creative when answering. Do not answer short, but answer, answer a long uh, answer script. Eh? And that are actually the tips for interview. Okay, if you answer short answer, then you will get more questions. If you answer very long, one paragraph or two paragraphs, you are explaining in one paragraph or two paragraph. The tendency is that the interviewer won't ask more questions because you're already explaining a lot. Okay, so that are the tips okay, to actually excel in an interview. Okay, and I did that interview. My, most of the time, my interview will actually cause about 30 minutes on my interview, like uh, to associate professor to uh, previously. Okay. So, but some staff actually go, uh, went to the interview, two hours interview, okay? So, you can imagine what's the difference there. So, that is actually the communication skills that you have, okay? Then, that is something that need, you need to experience it. So, in class, like what we have right now, is something that communication skill, of course, um, you're writing in a chat, but the chat is something that you can actually explain orally okay so let's go and look at uh, how uh, the improvement of the answer in the chat eh? okay uh, so good good after explaining everything so Jeff new time shift time reversal time scaling okay very good I mean you have even and out signal okay uh, Muhammad Rizwan uh, time transformation and put transformation the shifting scaling so modular okay okay so most of you guys uh, understood but maybe um, just at the tip of your head lah like, what oh, the what did I do last week? Eh? Totally forgot what you did. Eh? Anyway, uh, my um, suggestion okay, before class, every time before class, go to the last week class. What do you do? What do you submit? 
and so on. Eh? So go to that and do your own recap before class. Okay, this is uh, my way of how to recap before the, the, the advanced topic eh? so that you're not lost uh, with my explanation. Eh? So for time transformation, we actually learn uh, two types of time transformation. Uh, 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 sorry, we learn two types of transformation. First one was time transformation. The second was amplitude transformation. And for both of these, you have learned three type of transformation for all the time and amplitude, which is time shifting. And then you have time reversal. And then you have time scaling. Okay, so um, this is a way how you do a note. You do a summary of uh, every every time after class, you do something like this. It's like a mind map or something then. Short note. And then so that, oh, okay, uh, I did learn about time shifting versus scaling. And actually, from here is that for the time uh, transformation, you have learned two types of method, right? So you have method one and method two. Okay, amplitude transformation only one method. Okay, only one method. So those are, that's like a mind map, map yeah? And then what else did you learn? Okay, you have also learned that. Based on this time transformation or amplitude transformation, you can actually uh, prove that it's an even or odd signal. Okay? And the combination of even and odd signal is actually the original signal. So, uh, this is what you have learned from week 1 until week 3. Okay? So, and then, uh, okay, last, the next one was uh, you have learned about exponential and sinusoidal signal. signal. Okay, I, I actually go through the um, thing, the feedback form and all this. You know, some students are uh, on this topic. Eh? They say, oh, doctor, uh, uh, can you actually explain first before uh, giving us some exercise hard question? Uh, actually, the question I gave to you, the sine wave signal is on time shifting. Okay, it's a sine wave and you just shift it to the advance or delay. So it's not actually difficult. It's actually you have done it in the uh, transformation here, yeah, time and amplitude transformation. So, uh, this is an example of when students didn't do recap on the previous class, they will find that, oh, Dr. Mario is doing some advanced uh, thing, like sinusoidal signal, 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 cosine uh, signal. But sinus so sign with signal and cosine signal is actually you learn in mathematics, which you are max, uh, during max set eh, subject. So it's not new to actually signal a system. It's actually you have learned even in your uh, high school, late last time in physics and so on. So uh, please remember that. You see it's not a, a lecturer spoon feeding student. Eh? It's a, about you directly deliver what is it for the topic because we don't have time actually to recap everything from physics in high school. Okay. So my suggestion is that if you cannot remember what is sine wave, what does it look like? Then go and search it. You have Google right now. Then Google it, or you can actually borrow textbook, reference book, or find some reference book online. Okay. So this is how you 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 need to learn if you want to excel in that subject. Okay. Especially subject like system. system. Eh? Okay. These are tips that I will give to you, and I'm sure that whoever student who actually follow this tip. You can actually get A for this subject in senior system. Even though it's hard, okay, but you can get an A, right? If with effort, eh? It's not by actually asking lecturer, can I get a C minus? Doctor, can you increase my grade to A minus? <laughs> okay, how do I actually in increase from C minus to A minus? Based on what fact? Okay, I need to look at your attendance, I need to look at your answer script, is it uh, actually answering a question? So those are the things that is not simply by requesting. I'm sorry, but this is normally asked by foreign students to increase the marks of grade. Um, and I'm sure lots of lecturers do, do not uh, increase these grades eh, uh, by uh, when student requested it. Okay, you need to go through the proper channel. Okay, request to the news team to actually appeal for um, checking for final exam only. Okay, final exam, uh, 
uh, answer script will be checked by another lecturer. Not your lecturer, but another lecturer, maybe he or she is not teaching that subject that semester. So they are going to mark according to the uh, scheme, marking scheme. So when mark, uh, according to marking scheme, sorry to say, it will be very strict. Okay? Uh, you don't have empathy, lah, basically. Your lecturer will still have empathy because they know you during the semester. Okay? So uh, please, um, the tip, do not fail the subject especially for those who are actually taking this subject uh, for repeating the subject, UM or UG. So please attend the class full okay, and follow the instruction given. If I ask you to submit a task or assignment, please do it. Do not copy from your friend. Eh? Copy from your friend is like copying skill. Go to uh, the uh, spec machine and copy it. Okay? But what do you learn? You learn the skill of copying. Eh, skill of copying, but we do not learn the method, the okay, method of answering the question. Okay, so you you actually a disadvantage. Okay, okay. So um, we have done one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we are going to. Okay, this one continuous time and discrete time. I think uh, that one is actually on the. the this one eh, the impasse step and unique impasse. Function, eh? So, any question before I start the class? Okay, if no question, then we directly go to, sorry, this one is, I think there's a, we are at number five. Eh? Sorry. So, number five, we have the unit step eh? and unit impulse function. Okay. So, let me just see that. Okay, unit step and unit impulse, I'm going to explain it in both in direct uh, discrete time and continuous time. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to explain in terms of the discrete time signal. Okay, so a unit step can be shown using this uh, symbol UN. So as mentioned, discrete time is, the difference between discrete time is that it has a square bracket. And if it's continuous time, then it's a bracket. Okay, so that's the difference. So if you see uh, this example, unit step. So you have u n square bracket. So it means that it's gonna going to be a discrete time signal. So why I'm mentioning this? Cause I notice that every every semester or every year that I'm teaching the UCAM student, okay, they, the question was on cons, uh, continuous time, but they answer it using discrete time method. So it's wrong. Totally wrong. And even sometimes the question is on continuous time signal, but the student answer in discrete time. So basically, sorry for that, but it's going to be zero marks. Because the basic concept in a 1.0, uh, sorry, in 2.0, the difference between continuous time and discrete time, student could not actually differentiate it. Okay? So, um, Let's look at this unit step. So u n is given by zero. This is value zero for n less than zero. Okay. So let's look at this graph. Uh, so you have x axis. Okay. And then because it's a discrete time, so you have the axis is n value. Okay? For a discrete time, it will be t nah? time. Okay? But we are not looking at this. So slash that. So, um, and normally my tips is that every time you are in chapter one or in the senior system topic, draw this line, arrow, and axis, and draw the value for zero, t equal to zero over that. Then that you can be unstrike to uh, draw out the signal. Okay? Imagine that if I only give to you un equal to this equation, okay, without this graph. So you can't do it. You, are, you need to understand this signal. Okay? What is this description? So, the value here is given by 0 for n less than 0. So, it means that n less than 0 means that minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 is 0. So, that's why you have 0, 0, 0, 0 until infinity, 0. Okay? And then, the next, uh, you have 1. Value 1 here for n more than 
or equal to zero. So it means that for n equal to zero, we have a value which is one. So we have one there. And then because it's more than zero, so you're going to have one until infinity. So when we have this type of signal, it's called a unique step. Okay. It's like um example of a unit stack signal. Where do you use it? Guys, application of a unit stack signal. Where do you use it? Any idea? Check in the chat. No idea. Okay. Need to do more reading, eh? Uh, guys, need to uh, do more reading, okay? Don't uh, think uh, this subject as a mathematics subject, eh? but uh, where you can apply it. Okay. Unit step signal is something when you switch on your light, okay? Histogram, uh, no, we take an example application, eh? Example is, histogram is not uh, the unit step, eh? the is the graph, eh? So, uh, example of the light switch, eh? Right now. If it's the value is zero, means that your light is is going to be off, right? And then you switch on the light pump, and then it's going to on forever and ever and ever until you switch it off. So meaning that the at this point where you didn't switch it, so uh, this is value of zero. This no, the light is off. It lights off, okay, off. And then at this point. You switch on the light, so it's going to be on. And because you leave it on, then it's going to be step, with a step forever. Okay. So that what that is what it means. Okay, right? So uh, for discrete time impulse and unit step sequence. Okay, this one is uh, uh next we are going to go to the unit step. The second one is the uh, unit step unit impulse. So unit impulse. Okay, we have. Delta n, so unit impulse is given by delta okay, delta n equivalent to for zero and not n other than zero. Okay, so it means that we have zero here and okay for n not equal to zero is zero 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 zero. Another value that you have here is 1. 1 is n equal to 0. So 1 is n equal to 0. Okay. So this is what it means. Eh? So you have an impulse. Impulse is only one signal. Okay. And, and having said that, let me just do an example. Okay. Having said that, we are going to do an example of unit step. Just now you have a unit step. What was the value at zero? And okay, you have zero, 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 and then you have one. And in infinity. So this is unit step. You are you have u n. Okay. So this is unit step. And you have learned that uh, you have a time shifting, time reversal, and time scaling. Correct. So for example, u n minus 2. Okay, how does the signal look like? How does the signal look like? Is it going to, what type of transformation do you think? Is it amplitude transformation? Is it a uh, time amplitude transformation? And what type of transformation do you think? Move to the right side. Time? Time shifting. Time shifting. Good. Who was that? Who was that? Time. Time. Eh? Yes. Okay. Right. So you have a time shifting. So meaning that, okay, this is what uh, I mean. Eh? So uh, last time you had done about time transformation. Okay. 
So when I directly write this out, then you can directly use what you have learned in week 1, 2, and 3 about the time shifting. So we have u n minus 2. So it's shifting is a delay, okay? delay which is shifted to the right. So it's going to be shifted to the right. So you have a shifted by 2. So shifted, everything is shifted. So this is what you mean in this step. And vice versa also for the unit impulse. Okay, unit impulse. If you see here, this example is that we have a delta n minus n naught. So assuming that this n naught is five. Okay, so delta n minus n naught means that it's going to shift by five to the right side. Okay? So this is an example. Right? So um, that was on the, uh, the discrete time. So we look at the First differential means that the relationship between the impulse and step, the impulse and step uh, signal. So you can actually uh, look at this and you can see that it says that for the this first differential is that delta n, which is the impulse signal, is given by u n minus u n minus one. Okay. So meaning, what does it mean? Let's draw it out here. So I'm going to draw out this signal. Okay, prove that u n minus u n minus one, you get a delta n. Reason why this is a simple signal. Eh? Later on, we are going to look at a uh, complicated signal. So you need to understand the concept. Okay, so u n is zero, one, two. So u n is uh, one, two, blah, blah 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 with the unit one. Okay, this is. I label it u n and then you have u n minus one okay so you have zero one two blah 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 so remember what i said last week or previous week one uh, for signal system please draw it in a parallel like this the same axis t equal to zero is in the same axis because this will really help you later on in the Sizes, eh? Okay, so we are going to look at u n minus one means that we have a time shifting to the right, means that delay, yeah? delay by one. So we have this blah 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 blah. So, on. so look at delta n definition. Delta n is equivalent to u n minus u n minus one. So delta n. Delta n is equivalent to u n minus u n. So what you need to do is that you need to this is simple plus minus subtract it. So one minus zero you have one here. Okay, the amplitude minus zero amplitude here you have one. Okay, this is of course so zero lah kan? Zero minus zero zero. Okay. 1 minus 1, 0, and so on until T. So that's why it can be proved that the first differential is equivalent to delta n here. Delta n is equivalent to delta r u n minus u n minus 1. Okay? And then we have also for the running summation. Okay, running summation is that we definition is that you have u n, which is the step input, okay, equivalent to the summation of delta n. Okay? So meaning that Okay, zero. You have delta n. You know that delta m is something that you have delta at zero, delta at one, delta at two, so on. Or if I would like to write it like this, u n minus one, you have delta n, delta n minus one, delta n minus two. So meaning that you have delta n here, then you have delta one. And until infinity. So this is what it means. Okay, you have the the summation okay, of all this impulse signal, and you will get u n. Okay, because when you sum this up, you will get this signal back. Okay. So next, we go to the sample by unit uh, 
it in pulse. Eh? So when you have a signal x and value, okay, x and value is different. Eh? Okay, just now we are seeing that for unit step, step signal uh, the the symbol is u. Then for uh, impulse, we have delta n. Okay. For, so what is xn? xn is just any signal. It can be a sign of signal, it can be any signal. So xn is any signal, yn is any signal. Okay. The one that you need to remember is that this is the unit for you will step un and delta n. So, if we have any signal, example that we have x n here given by this signal, and then we uh, sample it by delta n. So we have delta n over here. Okay, x n delta n. And notice that the t is a line. Okay, parallel. So easier for you to look at which one is being sampled. And if you see here, uh, if you sample this value, this value times zero, you get zero 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 zero. That's why you have zero 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 over here. And then at the part where you have the value here, one, for example, this is one times one. So you get one value. And then the rest, um, for n more than zero, you will get zero. Since delta n for n more than zero, you have zero. So that is where this is example of sampling. Okay, sampling is where you will use this later on in some control subject. Sampling time. That's where we have the sampling time. What are the sampling time? of your signal okay of your system for example sampling time is t equal to 0 0.1 milliseconds so you're very fast you have a very small sampling time so meaning that the signal uh, is going to be uh, uh, when it's convert back to the continuous time it's going to represent the real signal okay if you understood that on the discrete time so we Ah, now I'm going to explain about the continuous time. Okay, continuous time. Same concept, you have the unit step function. So unit step function is given by ut. Remember, for discrete time, this one is uh, unit time, discrete time. So for the discrete time is u. Okay, so for continuous time, it's given by ut. Okay, n is given by 0, t uh, less than 0, this one is actually, uh, and t more than, more or equal to 0 is 1. So, unit step is represented by this one. It's like a step, lah. Okay, step case, eh? But one only step, one step, one step up, then we have it until infinity. Actually, this is until infinity, okay? If you write ut. And then for impulse function is that you have delta t. So delta t, uh, how you draw it is a different, a bit different from the discrete time. Discrete time, if you see here, okay, discrete time, you draw it like this at zero, and then a circle at the end. For the uh, continuous time is that. You are going to draw it like this. And remember, this is time domain because it's continuous time. So time domain, write out what is the signal, delta t. And then we have uh, at zero, we have an arrow up. So this is represented by the impulse function for this time. Okay. And if you were to sample okay, the impulse function, for example, you have xt. This is a, a signal xt here given by any random signal. Okay, and you sample, you're going to sample by delta t. Okay, so delta t is actually, even though you see here that it's very small, okay, but it's going to represent in a continuous time. Continuous time, you know that it's not going to be just line there, you have a value, so you are sampled by delta t, very small on uh, impulse. Okay, so when you sample that, you only left with this signal, okay, this signal for the continuous time, okay? And this one is actually the sampling. For running integral, you have ut, ut, it can be, you, you can actually derive it, okay? Uh, then you derive the delta t, you will get 
the running legal duty and purpose derivation. Uh, if you want to, you can try this out, but um, this one will not be covered in exam. So I'm just going to be very fast. So just a concept that you need to know. So delta T is equivalent to du over dt. So derivation of the input, you will get delta. Okay. So up until now, we have learned about two sub to signal that eh? we have learned about the unit step input and also the uh, delta okay, delta which is the impulse signal now we are going to see the unit ram function okay so unit ram function so in, when you integrate the unit step function it will result in a unit ram so what does it mean by unit ram unit ram is uh, given by this equation okay so you have for zero, uh, for t less or equal to zero, you have zero value. And for t more than zero, you have a t value. Okay, t value. Okay, means that you have a slope. Lah. Okay, so what is RAM? If you, if you are driving a car or the motorbike, you know that RAM is what? It's something that when you have a bumper, you ramp up, kan? ramp up, go up, and then you go down. Or like a wheelchair, you have a ramp that. So you're going to uh, push the wheelchair up the ramp. So it's actually a slope. Okay. And the slope will have um, the M value. Okay. M value ni dia punya uh, the, the, the slope height. Lah. Okay. So why this is T only? Okay. We need to look at the equation, the general equation of mass. Y equal to MX plus C. Okay. And if you see here, this line is a linear line, okay? And of course, you know that the cross-section is at zero, so you have C equal to zero. So you are left with Y equal to MX, okay? And remember, X represents the T, I mean. So from here, you know that X is T, okay? Just next to it by T, and M is the value of the slope. So we have one at here and one, the axis, the slope, eh? Coordinate that. So, meaning that your slope is actually y. So, that's why you have y equal to t. Means that this value. Okay. So, by assuming that, if you look back at this equation, eh, rt equal to t u t. Okay. So, we know that t representing the ram value just now. Okay. So, you may actually uh, get t. Sometimes you will calculate you get 2t means that the slope m is 2. Okay, value is 2. So what is ut? Ut is the step input just now. And you know that step input is what? Step input is a signal that you have something like this, and then you, you step it up at t equal to 0, and that is going to go to infinity. Infinity and beyond. Okay? So meaning that when you multiply or uh, when you sample it okay just now we learned about sampling okay so you sample these two signal this signal one the unit step with the ramp so what happens that for this value you will get one times zero so you actually will get back again this ramp value okay so that is why unit ramp is represented by rt equal to t okay, okay any question Any question? No, if I okay, all right. Eh? So if okay, we go to the example. So uh, we have an example here. Okay, you are given XT signal. XT, then you have the, this is what? Is it a time domain? Or uh, sorry, is, a, is it a continuous time signal or discrete time signal? Right there in the chat. Continuous time or discrete time? Continuous time. Okay, very good. Why? Because you look at the bracket. Huh? Okay, you have x, t. So it's continuous time. And also, you, when you refer to this signal, you can directly see that it's a continuous time. If discrete time, it doesn't represent like this, a continuous signal like this. Eh? So, so it's a continuous time. So, the question is, find the transfer function for xt. Okay. 
So having the idea okay, or the background of time shifting, okay, amplitude shifting, uh, sorry, uh, time, time transformation, amplitude transformation, and just now we have learned about the unit step and unit gap. And then also on the impulse signal. Okay, having that all in your head right now, so we are going to draw, uh, drag out the equation. So from this equation, Okay, from this equation, we are going to solve, find the tensor function. Eh? So, find tensor function for x t. Okay, so if I draw out the signal, okay, 0, 1, 2 is a time, sig time domain signal, and then you have this x t, and you have the signal like this. Okay, and the value amplitude is 1. So having said that, we are going to draw out the signal in parallel. Going down. Then you have 0 here, 1, 2. Okay, so if you see here, what do, what type of signal do you think is it uh, comprised? Is it a step? Step signal or impulse signal or ramp signal? What do you think in the chat? I think it's in pass of the false. No. Impulse is only a small signal, a very small one means that maybe in zero point one millisecond. Step. Okay, good. Uh, it's not an uh, impulse, yeah? Just uh, like I, I said just now, even though you 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 saw that the unit impulse is look like a step, yeah? But like I said, step me is very small one. It's actually a sample very small one in 0 0.1 millisecond. It's a very small sampling time. Nobody are going to uh, sample a control signal using one second. Okay, so um means that you have a very bad controller, okay? So, it's actually a step input. It's here, you are going to use only step input, but there are some, it's, there are some times by transformation. Okay, so I'm going to draw out from zero. So we have uh, U, sorry, not U, we have, So we have a UN. Um, okay, let me just write there. You have step input is X T. Okay. Then you have a uh, for impulse. You have delta T. But we are going to use the step N, step input. Okay. So Bukan XT, eh? XT is a signal. Step input is UT just now. Eh? UT. So, if I were to write out what? UT. Okay, UT. Draw it out. UT. UT. Do, how does it look like? It looks like this. Eh? UT. Then you need it and then UT. So, we have one value. So, this is what UT looks like. Okay. And then, oh, okay. It looks like almost similar to the XT. But what do you think? Is there any time transformation over there? Yes, we have a time transformation. Okay, 
CEO. Okay, only in Ong Yi Sui have given the answer. Okay, uh, let's look at if it's correct. Ong. So we have here, if you see here, where do you start the signal? Is it at zero? T equal to zero? No, it's at T equal to one. So meaning that you know that you have a time shifting. You have U, T minus one. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. So meaning that this UT value here is going to be shifted by one. Okay, so you have done the first part. So it's look almost, almost correct, but not correct yet. Because you see that you have a value one and up until t equal to two. Okay, so meaning that you, you, you must know by now that you need to have another signal over here. Okay, so zero, one, two, three. Okay, so what are the signal? A or he, he, he or she, eh? I'm sorry, I, I do not know. But anyway, he actually right there, there's another signal which is you. T minus 2. Why 2? Because you see that there's a difference between this uh, one, uh, the value is 1 over here and then another one is 0. So there's a transition. When you see a transition, means that you know there's a time shifting over there. Okay. So you have U T minus 2. So meaning that the other signal will be at U T minus 2. Okay. So next, what do you need to do? So right now we have the first signal, U T minus 1. And then you have the second signal, u t minus 2. So what you need to do is that you need to divide it. Uh, divide it. Uh, subtract it. Okay. Signal 1, subtract by signal 2. So let me just write that out. Okay, you have 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, let's do it together. You have 0 over here, 0. So it's 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, 1 minus 0. You have 1. And then 1 minus 1, you have 1. Sorry, 1 minus 1 is 0, but you have also uh, the same the part over here. 1 minus 0, you have 1. Okay? And then 1 minus 1, you get 0. So, you will get this equation. Okay? So, the answer is that xt is u t minus 1 minus u t minus 2. So, correct, Ong. Congratulations. You answered it before uh, I'll explain. So, this is the basic concept. Of course, this one is very uh, basic. Yeah? Um, so, we are going to go and look at some more examples. Yeah? So, let me just see that. Do an example. Okay, first we are going to do this first example. Okay. You have xt equal is given by 1 minus uh, 1 uh, minus t. So what you need to do is at first rearrange it. Okay, rearrange this. You know that, oh, you have a t value. Then if you have a t value, means that you have a ram value eh, just now. So ram is actually you have a t value there. So, you rearrange it, you have minus t plus 1. Okay, xt minus t plus 1. And since you have a ram value, you know that you have a ram value, so you need to always use this equation, y equal to mx plus c. Okay, so if you see here, what is the value of m for this equation? What is the value for m? Minus 1. Good. One. Okay, good. Very good. So, minus 1. And then, the value for C is 1. Okay. So, mean that, oh, okay. So, you know, already know the concept here. Okay. So, what you need to do is that, okay, now we are going to draw the signal. You have T value 0. Okay. You have 1, 2, 3. I'm going to do, uh, draw the axis, uh, Y axis also. 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Uh, having said that, 
you know that you have an M value, the slope is minus one. So is it going to be in this direction slope or is in this direction slope? Which one? The first part or the second part? The second part. The second part. Good. So you have M minus one and you have the cross section at one. So I mean that is very this is very easy. Once you have this coordinate, you already know how to actually draw it. So you have one and then you have minus one. Minus one means that if you have value one here, then it's going to cross section at this point. So this will be the signal for xt equivalent to uh, one minus t. Okay. So this is an uh, example of how to catch a ram signal. Okay. So uh, next. Next. Okay, next, I think, um, okay, do, please do this, B and C. Please do B and C. Uh, since it's already 8.51, eh? So, do B and C. Upload your answer in Padlet. I'm going to open the Padlet and you are going to upload there, eh? Okay. So, Okay, screenshot right now, answer B and C and upload it. Okay, I'm going to give you until 9 a.m. Eh, to do that. Okay, for B is that you have the step input plus you have here, what is the value? It's a time, it's time scaling, eh? Zero point, uh, sorry, it's a amplitude scaling, so time 0 0.5. And then you have XT is you have a delta, which is a impulse signal, which is have a delay there. Eh? And then you have a amplitude scaling. Okay. So very quickly do it. B and C eh? going to scan that.
Okay. Um, let me share the screen. Right. Uh, I saw that a few students already uploaded. Uh, the and then most of you guys already uh actually uh, can answer it. So let's see here. Um, Hong, Hong Yi, Li, Sui, Po, Po, Jia, Zi. So submitted. Okay. Ni. Okay. Anonymous. Uh, other than your matrix ID, you may actually write out your name, eh? Okay, and because you are very anonymous, I don't not sure who you are. Okay, Tan Zuiya, okay, very good. Who else? Chong Jia Sheng, Ridwan, Muhammad Ridwan, right? Yeah, Rose Luman, okay. So I think uh, all of you uh, understood, okay, eh? the, the the simple exercise on there. So let's just Right, very fast one, eh? Very fast one. I'm going to answer it. So what I'm going to do is answering in this bracket first. U T minus U T minus one. This one I can eyeball it directly. So you know that you're going to have a step input at T equal to zero here, and then you have another one shifting by T minus one. One. So you know that okay, you have a U uh, T minus uh, T equal to zero. So you are going to have a shifting. Sorry. You have a value of ut here okay and then up until one over here okay you have t minus one shifting down so means that and you also have the subtract that okay so meaning that you have this type of signal however because you have here a uh, amplitude scaling so originally is what one, it was one eh because you have amplitude scaling, then you have 1 times 0 0.5. So, you have the amplitude 0 0.5. So, this one is the answer for this signal B. Okay. So, I think uh, most of you got that one. So, and then next one is that you have a delta. So, we're going to write that 0, 1, 3. So, you have here uh, 2 delta T minus 1 over 1 over 1 over 2, right? Okay. So, I mean that is that at this point, lah. Okay. And because it's a delta, so you know that delta, how do you draw it? You have a shift time shifting, okay? If it's delta alone, then you have this value at zero. But you have a shifting, t minus 1 over 3. So it's going to shift to the right. So you are going to shift it to right. And remember, because it's a continuous time, then yeah, how you draw the impulse is by having an arrow over there. Okay? And... Since it has also amplitude scaling there, so your amplitude is 2. Okay, so very easy. Okay, so we are going to move on to a much more difficult signal. Okay, so if you see here, you have how many signal over there? Okay. First one, one, you have another one, and then you have another one, and then you have another one. So basically, you have one, two, three, and four. Okay. So having said that, uh, if in the exam, midterm exam or final exam, if you look at the question, oh, so many equation over here. Okay. Don't panic. First of all, do not panic. And then, anyway, the question is open book style, okay? So it means that you already have the answer with you. Just that you need to actually organize your uh, the method how to find the final answer so for this case is that you're going to draw the signal so first of all the very simple method is that okay you're going to draw out for three t first okay first signal so i'm going to draw it over here first signal okay you have a t value so 3ut means that you have at uh, 0, okay. Then ut, draw it out, then infinity, okay. And you have the amplitude 3. So that will be the first step, okay. Next, we are going to draw the second signal. Second signal. Okay, so draw that, same thing. Make sure that it's parallel, okay. At t equal to zero, zero parallel means that t equal to zero is in the same line. Okay, you will understand why 
I asked you to do this. Eh? So next, you see that you have what signal? You have T U T. Now remember, T U T is what signal just now? It's actually a RAM signal. Okay. So T is a RAM, and then because you don't U T, so it's going to ramp up until infinity. So, so, uh, so you know that for example, lah, we have here one. Ah. Oh, it didn't save. Okay, <laughs> I need to start over, sorry. Okay, uh, you have the first one, second one, third one. This is something that I don't like about technology. Eh? If there's error, oh, it's going to read for everything. Okay. So we have zero here just now. So you have three. I'm going to uh, draw it above it. So three. Then you have one, two, one, two. Eh? So I'm going to label it one, two, three, four. Okay, second signal is UT. So you have here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So TUT means that you have a ramp up. So imagine that if this is a 1, so you're going to have the signal ramp until infinity. Okay. So this is what it means. Okay. See that. Okay, next, we are going to draw out the third signal over here. Third signal. Okay, so uh, if I were to uh, write it out over here, eh, so you have. Uh, zero, one, four. Yeah. So you have here, U, T minus one. So U. T minus 1, you know that that's a unit step input, which is uh, shifted to the right side. Okay, so I'm going to draw that shifted to the right side. Okay, so UT minus 1. Oh, really? I I I need to remove uh the the because the file is too heavy, Jeff. Wait for a while.
So let's do this. Okay. So the next signal. So if I were to write this out, you have a. You have P U T. Okay. The third signal is we know that you have a RAM uh, unit step input U T minus one. But um, as you know, unit step input. If I were to draw out unit step input for this uh, equation, so you have zero one is going to be shifted until infinity, right? And it's also sampled by a RAM signal. Okay, P minus one. So T minus 1, we need to uh, identify first. T minus 1, how does the signal look like? So as I said, we need to rearrange it again. Minus 1, I'm sorry, it's already arranged. Eh? So you have that signal, T minus 1. Okay, meaning that what is the value for M? M is, anyone in the chat, M, what is M, what is C? What is M? The value of M? According to this equation, okay, M is uh, one. All right, okay, thank you. M is one, and uh, your C is minus one. Okay, so having said that, okay, you can imagine that this is uh, actually related to the what uh, the example that I showed to you in the previous one a example just now. Eh? So we have M one. Then you have C is minus 1. Okay. So, meaning that, okay, you know, M is 1 like this, but you have C at minus 1. Okay. Because, and you know that because you have a shifting over here at P minus 1. So, what you're going to do is that, sorry, Miss Allah. Okay. You have 0 here, 1 here. So, you're going to start with the signal T minus 1. Okay. At this point, T minus 1, okay, because it shifted, okay, for this whole signal, okay. So, remember, you done the first one, which is this one, and you know that it's going to start at T, uh, uh, T equal to 1. So, that's why for unit RAM, you're going to start it at this value, T equal to 1, okay. So, having said that, you're going to write M with the value of 1. So, you have next one is 2, then M B to 1 again. So you have M like this, and if you were to extend this, okay, so you get the cross section at, at minus one. Okay, so that's why you have this signal. So this signal is represented the signal number three. So I'm going to write it here. Okay, T. So you have zero, one, two, three. Okay, so T minus one. So this one is signal number three is T minus one to T minus one. Okay. So the third signal, the fourth signal. Okay. For the signal is uh, easy. You have five U T minus two. So we have zero, one, two. Okay, U T minus 2 means that it's going to shift at 2 here. Okay, and you have the amplitude is 5. five. Okay, so bear in mind that when I draw this equation, you notice that I didn't add in the this plus or minus value. Eh? So you have the first signal, 3 plus second signal. And actually, you need to minus the third signal. So, it's actually minus here. Okay. 
Okay. And you also have a minus over here for the blue one. So you have minus and minus. So meaning that if you have minus there, remember you did uh, re, you did on the uh, amplitude transformation. Okay? Amplitude transformation. Amplitude transformation is what? You have the uh, amplitude shifting, you have amplitude scaling, you have amplitude reversal. Okay. So for the case of this, you have this minus and minus plus plus is actually amplitude transformation okay for um reversal reversal amplitude reversal eh? so meaning that this signal over here is need to be flipped downward okay so I have to copy that Okay, All right, so I already flipped that. Okay, sorry, you need to draw it on your own. Eh? Okay, so I flipped that, meaning that the original signal was this one. So I actually flip it on the uh, uh, the axis, y axis. Eh? So you actually have here, so I'm going to write again the value 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you have 0, 1, 2, 3. So you have here, um, the amplitude is minus five. And also you have here, uh, you have uh, something like this. Okay. So having said that, what you are going to do next is that you are going to uh, add all of the signal. Signal one plus signal two minus signal three minus signal four. But because since you already flipped the signal, so it's going to be all multiplied. Addition, add, okay? add all the signal, eh? signal 1, 2, and 3, 4, add it because you already reverse it just now. Okay? So how you do that is sorry, eh? uh, this is so uh, difficult to teach. Going to make it smaller bit. Okay, so you can see that uh, I really make it smaller because we don't have space and I don't want to actually draw again. Uh, so we are going to continue over here, down here. Okay, so let's draw out the signal XD. Okay, XD. So first of all is X, we have three signal, uh, four signal, signal one plus signal two plus signal three plus signal 4. And remember that we already combined this the, in, uh, with the reversal, amplitude reversal also in the signal 3 and also amplitude reversal in the signal 4. 
So this is already reversed. Okay? So since already reversed, then you need to just add up all of the signal. Okay. So having said that, I'm going to draw out a zero, the value first. One, two, three, four. Then you have the x-axis, y-axis. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we start with at the t equal to zero. Okay. t equal to zero, you know that um, other than this, because we are doing doing the sampling, yeah? remember sampling, uh, simple one, two, three. So you see that at this one, because you have zero, so everything before zero will actually be zero value, okay? And we are going to start with uh, this uh, value first, okay? So look at only these two signal, okay? Signal one plus signal two, okay? Draw that out, three plus one. Uh, plus zero, you have three. So you are going to have uh, something like this. Okay, three plus zero. And then at this point, three plus one, you have four. Okay. And then what else? Uh, next step is at this point, you, you see that uh, you have a zero point here. Okay. And then next is uh, uh, the next value. Any difference here? This is zero. This is start at zero. Next is you are starting at 1 here. Eh? So at one value, if you were to draw this out, okay, if I were to uh, draw for signal 1 plus signal 2, it's actually going to actually go to infinity. Okay? Signal 1 plus signal 2. But is that the correct answer yet? No, we have not finished combining signal 3 plus signal 4. So now we are going to, the next step is that we are going to combine signal 2 and 3. Okay. Next, since we already done this, okay, next, this signal, what we have drawn here, plus signal 3. So, signal 3, you see that we have at uh, t equal to 1 value. So, we have t equal to 1 at this point, okay, at this point. Lah. So, we have the, the signal going down. So, actually, the signal is moving downward, okay. It is cancelling out. This signal plus this signal is going to be cancelled out. So it means that next signal will be a constant value. Okay. This signal 1 and 2, this is signal 1 plus 2. This is signal 3. Okay. 1 and 2 is going to be in going to infinity. But since you have the uh, signal number 3 value, okay. So this is not. My labeling is not correct. Okay, eh? plus since you have this value, it, it will actually cancel out at this point. So you have the constant value up until point number two here. Okay, two. Next value is that you have minus plus minus five. So plus minus five mean that you have this one is the value four. For four, this is amplitude shifting. For minus five, you have minus one. So you have minus one and it's going to go until infinity. Okay. So this will be the final answer. Okay. So your xt is given by this signal. So do you, can you understand the, 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 the this exercise? Any question? Madam, can you repeat for the second method? The two plus three. Oh, the section plus of. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to repeat for the two plus three. Eh? One plus two, I'm sure it's very easy. Or one plus two. Okay. Two plus three. Okay. Uh, the, the signal that I draw here, this one up until here and then this one going up to infinity is signal 1 plus 2 okay next we are going to do the signal 2 plus 3 so 2 plus uh sorry not 2, two plus 3 but one uh the whole thing lah this one okay 1 plus 2 plus 3 so you know that the third signal you have this type of signal okay at 1 okay shifting at 1 here so you remember that you are going to follow at this point at one value, okay, this signal will actually be drawn at this point, okay, with the M value equal to 
minus 1 just now. So when you draw this out, if you see here, because it's linear, this is m minus 1, this is m equal to 1. Okay, it's going to be cancelled out. Cancel out lah. If you combine it, it will cancel out. So that's why when you cancel out, you will have this constant value. Okay, so that's why your signal will actually change at this point, constant value. Okay, and up until this point, your next point is at 2. Okay, 2. So you see that at 2, okay, you have done doing the third signal. Now you're going to do the fourth signal, plus 4. So at 2 is that you have the amplitude shifting. Sorry, uh, ampli uh, no, amplitude shifting. So shifting plus minus 5. So you have amplitude here is at 4. Then minus 5 amplitude. So 4 minus 5, you have minus 1. And because it's a step input, so that's why it's going down and continues going to infinity. Okay? Can you understand that? Thank you, Doctor. This constant, okay, imagine now, if that value at that point then it's at uh, x axis 0. So we have one signal going up with m equal to 1 and another signal moving down with m equal to minus 1. What do you think? It will be cancelled out kan? So it means that you will got a constant value. This signal m, this signal 1 plus signal 2, you get a constant value. So this is what, what is happening at this point here. Okay, if you understood that, okay, this one is an example of midterm exam. Okay, but I will give you more example on midterm exam later on. Um, okay, based on that, maybe we look at these exercises. Okay, the same concept. Eh? Okay, prove this one is example of a midterm exam. I, I'm not, I cannot remember which year, but because we are not going to recycle the question. Eh? Uh, so. Prove that the signal shown can be described as x t t minus one u t minus one minus t u t u t minus two minus u t minus four. Okay, so what it means that actually this question is very simple if you can understand the concept just now, because you are not only given the signal but you also are given the the answer. You need, just need to prove it. So if you're able to prove it. Using what I explained just now, all of the parts, then you actually will get to mark. Okay? Of course, you cannot skip all of the, uh, the, 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 the procedure. Eh? So, um, this question. Let's do this. Okay, um, I'm going to show to you since uh, I don't have time. I don't have time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I plan to this week we finish uh, chapter one. Eh? So I'm going to show to you directly how to answer this. Uh, Okay. Maybe I need to put it here so that it's easier for us to see. Okay. So prove that we're going to prove this equation. Okay, first of all. Identify how many equations do you think you have? You have first one, second one, third. Okay, so you have one, two, three. So you do it step by step accordingly. Yeah? So we have first one, T, we have zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, remember when you do this, do not look at do not look at this if possible. No, don't look at that graph. Okay. If you look at the graph, 
most of the time you will try to uh, oh how to do the ball in the red oh this is that's a run over there so you know, so on so and up you you're actually not proving it you are trying to actually answer it how to draw it out okay so uh i would suggest that you need to look at the question the equation there and then draw it out from your understanding okay so first of all So we know that we have um, first equation. We have u t minus one, and then we have t minus one. This is very easy, okay? Compared to just now, right? Okay, just now it is much more difficult. This one you have three questions, so you have a step input here, okay, with a, with a delay, and then we know that you have a ramp. So let's say that I'm going to draw it over on the right side so that uh, this one will be the main, the left side will be the main one. So I'm going to write out the step input. So you have 0, 1. So it's going to have a shifting. Okay. And then next. We want to have the T minus 1. Okay. So T minus 1. T minus 1. So, what's the M value? What's the C value? It's the same thing eh, just now. As M is 1, C is minus 1. So, uh, same lah. So, actually, you get this signal. You will get for the first equation is this. Okay? So, this is the first uh, equation. Okay? Second one, D. Okay? Is U T minus 2. Okay, you have a uh, uh, U T minus 2. So let's let's try to to eye eye boil it. Yeah, one, two, three, four. You know that you are going to start it with a shifting time shifting at this one, this point for the step input. Okay, and then you have u t minus two. So what does it mean that? Okay, if we look at this thing, okay, so you have minus t equal to for the second one. I'm going to draw it there m equal to 1, then c is at minus 2. But remember, you have a time reversal, so everything needs to reverse. So meaning that m become minus 1, and also c become 2. Okay. So when you draw that out, you will have something like Have something like this, okay? Bigger so that it represent the original signal. Almost like yeah. <laughs> my scaling is not according to the top. Okay, so number three. Okay, we are done with that. We already and bear in mind that we already insert the negative value there. So what you need to do is that 1 plus 2, the signal, you are already complete this because we already reverse it, okay? The next, we you have um, minus u t minus 4, this is very simple, t minus 4 is over here, 4, okay? So you have a unit step, but bear in mind you have the minus here, so it's going to be okay? like this, eh? minus 1. So in the end, what you need to do is that okay, what you need to do is that you need to combine all of the equation that you have drawn. Okay? So you have equation 1 plus equation 2 plus equation 3. So you draw it out, T, you write out the value 1, 2, 4. Let's do it. 0 plus 0. So it's uh, already, uh, it's no value over there. So, and of course, this one with this will be actually cancelled out. Eh? Okay, so we are going to start. Um, and remember, eh, oh, I, I forgot to mention to you. Okay, even though the question, uh, the signal number 2, okay, you have uh, T minus 2C at this point. Eh? But actually, uh, the starting point of that signal is being shifted. Eh? So, meaning that, I remove that, meaning that T 
you have the signal like this. This one, this one is actually you draw a dotted line, eh? dotted line, eh? Okay. And also you need to draw it like this for the first signal. Why? Why do you think? Because you have a unit step input. You have a unit step input. Unit step input is something that you are going to multiply this two signal. When you multiply, you have a zero value times this anything value. It will actually start like this. Okay, that's why you have the first signal is like this, and the second signal is like this. Same goes to this one. Okay, so actually, um, maybe I wrongly draw just now. Okay, but the concept was. The concept was that you have minor num signal number three is u t minus one, right? So actually, okay, I can remove. You actually have this one as one. This one is the before reverse, eh? Yeah. Okay. So you actually have this one. Remember, it's going to start here. So this value is actually zero. So that's why you get this value. Okay. Um, if you can understand, then maybe later in the palette you can uh, remind me to explain it again tomorrow, eh? Okay. So for this case, for this case is that you're going to look at the value. So zero plus zero plus zero is zero. 0 plus 0 also is 0. Oh, sorry, you have a value 0 and uh, 0 here. So you have a 0 starting point. And the next signal is you see that there's a ramp. So you're going to draw up the ramp okay, with uh, amplitude 1. Okay, So that's why it's good if you can draw the line together. And at this point, starting at 2, okay, at 2 here, 2 here, at this point. Uh, so you see that uh, one signal is going up. M is positive and one signal is going down. M is minus. So what happens is that it's going to cancel out. Okay. So meaning that it's a different color. So you have here. Then you are going to have this one until the next phase. Uh, transition is at T equal to 4. Okay. So meaning that this value to 4 and then also t to 4 it will be a constant value so constant value up until 4 and then you have here minus 1 so this is value is amplitude is 1 so 1 minus 1 you have a 0 so look back at the question you actually prove x t okay x t is same as 1 uh, in that you need to prove okay so this is how need to prove the equation. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I think this one, example, this example, eh, please do it at home. Uh, this example, uh, this uh, example 65. I'm not sure, maybe in the slide is different uh, number. Eh? So this example, and this exercise, please do it at home. I will open in uh, in the uh, in ULEN eh, for submission, not Padlet. Eh. In ULEN, I will open for submission and we will try to discuss it tomorrow before we start, we continue for the last part of chapter one. Eh. And uh, just for for the sake of explaining, because some students say, oh, doctor, can we, can you give me, a, can we give, can you give us example of past uh, midterm format? So this is, one example. Uh, this one was done on uh, 2015 2016. Okay, so represent the signal as shown. Okay, in the singularity function means that singularity function is the one that I explained to you just now. Lah. Okay, we need to draw out the equation. Okay, come up with the equation. So this one will be an example of a midterm exam or final exam. Okay, it's not going to be simple like this. It's going to be a bit complicated. Okay, and I think I will stop there. Um, 
and uh, for tomorrow they start we are going to finish up for chapter one eh? okay so this one do at home and this one also do at home okay uh but we have time so let me just explain how you're going to go about this equation okay imagine that oh this signal is going up so it means that we at least need to have a ramp signal and it's going to start at zero okay so that will be the first signal so if i draw that out the first signal will be something like this okay something like this first signal and then second signal you see that if you look at my example before okay the signal that i explain is that it goes up and that is good constant because we actually cancel it out okay okay so what you need to do is that for second uh second yeah what you need to do is that assuming that we are going to make it constant first okay so we are going to have at shifting at two okay shifting at two like this okay so your next signal will start like this okay this is second signal third signal if you have this one means that if signal one plus two you actually have this signal but this does not represent xt because your signal is moving down at t equal to two so what you need to do is that you have a third signal the third signal still at two okay two. okay and it has a slope what is the value of slope that m and c so that, that one you need to calculate so the slope will be and this slope and this slope m1 and m2 is not the same slope remember this one is m equal to one this is m equal to one two or half this one you need to calculate is on coordinate m how to calculate uh, m just now that like i said you use y equal to m x plus c then you can calculate the find out what is m what is the coordinate uh, you you may ask oh, how do i find out what is the c because you are going going to use this equation okay this m value is negative but then is it negative 2 or negative uh, 0 0.5 so that is what you need to calculate and then you see that oh this is a cross section at one point some point here so how to calculate this is very simple after you get what is m you know that the coordinate here is 3 0 and also the coordinate here is 2 2 so find what is m substitute it into here Okay, you can either use this coordinate or this coordinate. Then you will get this signal equation for the RAM value. Okay, so you have another signal which is like this. Okay, this M1, this is M2. Okay, not the same. Even there, it's not the same, M0. And uh, when you have this signal, then your, your signal here will start to move down but it's going to go down infinity okay because you know that once you put the ram minus ram there that is going to go down to infinity now uh, as mentioned you want to make it constant at t value so you need to add one more signal okay at three ram it up with the same m2 value but minus okay that for this signal looks simple it's look at oh, okay going up going down but actually to answer this question you need for four different equation okay so understood yes in the chat if you understood that <laughs> okay uh well the idea is the same eh? uh, you have to just do, to learn how to combine the signal and then uh for exercise uh this one as this as a point is the same thing Okay, so find that one. But additionally, other than find the transfer function, I can also ask you determine and sketch the even and out signal and prove the signal is even and out. So this one is a combination of what you have learned in chapter one, two, uh, in week one and week two and week three. Yeah? Okay. And then uh, for me, the format, uh, I think I'm not going to discuss this, but you can do it on your own later when we have time, maybe before the midterm exam, we will go through this example. But if you have done that, then make sure you you, uh, you keep it. Okay. So uh, I will open in you learn to, for you guys to submit um, this one. 
this exercise and also this exercise. Eh? The deadline to submit is uh, by, I think by today lah, midnight. I give it until midnight today. Okay, so you have time. I think you have learned today uh, detail how to do the exercise. So I give you until midnight to submit these two exercises. Eh? Okay, any, any question? I think that's all for today. Any question? No? No question, eh? Okay, if no question, everybody understood, then uh, see you guys tomorrow. Make sure that you upload the two exercise by tonight. I will open in Newland, not in Padlet, eh? in Newland. Okay, so that's all for from me. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.